Mike Lee is the senator from the state of Utah, and today on the Senate floor, he decided to talk about the Green New Deal and the issue of climate change with the seriousness that he thinks it deserves. And in the process, he tries to be funny, he tries to channel his inner edgelord, but it just comes across as completely cringeworthy. Because it's not just that he's trying and failing at comedy, but he's outright lying and strawmanning his opponents. So he's not even making a good faith case against the Green New Deal. He's trying to be smug about how bad it is when he's actually not even explaining it to you in a factual way. So take a look, but just be warned, this is incredibly idiotic and you will in fact lose IQ points by watching this. You've been warned. This is of course a picture of former President Ronald Reagan uh, naturally firing a, a machine gun while riding on the back of a dinosaur. You'll notice a couple of important features here. Uh, first of all, uh, the rocket launcher uh, strapped to President Reagan's back. And then the stirring, unmistakable patriotism of the velociraptor holding up a tattered American flag, a symbol of all it means to be an American. Now, critics might quibble with this depiction of the climactic battle of the Cold War, because while awesome, in real life, there was no climactic battle. There was no battle with or without velociraptors. The Cold War, as we all know, was won without firing a shot. But that quibble actually serves our purposes here today, Mr. President, because this image has as much to do with overcoming communism in the 20th century as the Green New Deal has to do with overcoming climate change in the 21st. The aspirations of the proposal have been called radical. They've been called extreme. But mostly, they're ridiculous. There isn't a single serious idea here, not one. To illustrate, let me highlight two of the most prominent goals produced by the plan's authors. Goal number one, the Green New Deal calls essentially for the elimination of airplanes. Now this might seem merely ambitious for politicians who represent the densely populated northeastern United States. But how is it supposed to work for our fellow citizens who don't live somewhere between Washington, D.C. and Boston? In a future without air travel, how are we supposed to get around the vast expanses of, say, Alaska during the winter? Well, I'll tell you how. Tauntauns, Mr. President. This is a beloved species of repto mammals native to the ice planet of Hoth. Now, while perhaps not as efficient in some ways uh, as airplanes or as snowmobiles, these hairy bipedal species of space lizards offer their own unique benefits. Not only are tauntauns carbon neutral, but according to a report a long time ago and issued far, far away, they may even be fully recyclable and usable for their warmth, especially on a cold night. What about Hawaii? Isolated 2,000 miles out into the Pacific Ocean. Under the Green New Deal's effective airplane prohibition, how are people there supposed to get to and from the mainland? And how are they supposed to maintain that significant portion of their economy that's based on tourism? At that distance, swimming would, of course, be out of the question. And jet skis are notorious gas guzzlers. No, all residents of Hawaii would be left with is this. This is a picture of Aquaman. Talking points released by the sponsors of the resolution the day it was introduced cited the goal of, quote, fully getting rid of, and I'll paraphrase a little bit here, flatulating cows. Now, Mr. President, I share their concern. But honestly, I think you've got to remember that if they think the cows smell bad, just wait till they get a whiff of the seahorses. But back to the cattle. Uh, I've got a chart to illustrate this trend. As you can see, Mr. President, on the left, 
These little cows represent the bovine population of America today. On the right is the future population under the Green New Deal. The right's getting better at comedy, and um, it's making lefties nervous. <laughs> I feel like that tweet from Paul Joseph Watson will never stop being relevant. But what a disingenuous liar. If you're going to try to make fun of the Green New Deal, then you have to try to not look like a fucking moron yourself, Mike Lee. But he couldn't help himself. He had no choice but to straw man the Green New Deal. And he said, quote, the Green New Deal calls for essentially the elimination of airplanes. He then went on to talk about how it wants to get rid of cows. What does that even mean? Do you honestly think that United States Congress people are calling for the elimination of cows? I feel like they're not stupid. They know that they're lying. But it's just basically become a talking point that the right, the totality of the right has picked up on, but I don't think that they realize it's hurting their case because it's so extreme, it transcends the realm of reasonability and it makes them look fucking foolish because nobody's calling for us to ban air travel and cows and really the specific reference to airplanes and farting cows in the Green New Deal that he cites there, it talks about how we can't get rid of cows. We can't stop air travel anytime soon. So what we need to do is we have to come up with a way to offset that and cut greenhouse gas emissions elsewhere so we are net zero when it comes to our greenhouse gas emissions. Since we can't reduce our carbon footprint because of the necessity of air travel, then we have to look for other ways and innovative means of tackling this issue and cutting it where we possibly can. But of course he's not going to be nuanced. Of course he's not going to present his opponent's arguments in a reasonable way because this guy's a fucking moron and he's not a serious person, but he wants you to think that his opponents, Ed Markey and AOC, are the ones that aren't being serious and that, you know, this is all just a joke. No, it's not a joke. Climate change is, in fact, a serious issue and he doesn't care because he has a vested interest in maintaining the status quo, which is doing nothing. And what I don't think he realizes is that this doesn't come off as him being edgy or humorous. It just looks disingenuous because he's basically saying, look, peasants, I'm just like you. I like Star Wars. I know what Tauntauns are. I like Aquaman. Aquaman is awesome. I'm cool. No, you're a fucking moron, dude, and you're lame as fuck. That's all that this is. This is lame and you look stupid and foolish because you're not presenting an argument and you're not going to get millennials on your side by pandering with memes. The dank may maze isn't going to win us over if we're worried that we're going to fucking die when we're older because dipshits like you won't take action on climate change. So he goes on now to conclude his remarks about the Green New Deal in this next clip and I want to show that to you and then I'll have some concluding remarks myself. The Green New Deal is not a serious policy document because it's not a policy document at all. It is, in fact, an aesthetic one. The resolution is not an agenda of solutions. It's a token of elite tribal identity and endorsing it a public act of piety for the chic and woke. And on those embarrassing terms, it is already a resounding success. As Speaker Pelosi herself put it, quote, the green dream or whatever they call it, nobody knows what it is, but they're for it, right? Right. Critics will no doubt chastise me for not taking climate change seriously. But please, Mr. President, nothing could be further from the truth. No Utah needs to hear pious lectures about the gravity of climate change from politicians from other states. For it was only in 2016, as viewers of the Sci-Fi Network will well remember, when climate change 
hit home in Utah when our own state was struck not simply by a tornado, Mr. President, but by a tornado with sharks in it. The Green New Deal is not the solution to climate change. It's not even part of the solution. In fact, it's part of the problem. The solution to climate change won't be found in political posturing or virtue signaling like this. It won't be found in the federal government at all. You know where the solution can be found, Mr. President? In churches, in wedding chapels, in maternity wards across the country and around the world. Mr. President, this is the real solution to climate change, babies. Climate change is an engineering problem, not social engineering, but the real kind. It's a challenge of creativity, ingenuity, and most of all, of technological innovation. And problems of human imagination are not solved by more laws. They're solved by more humans. More people mean bigger markets for more innovation. More babies will mean forward-looking adults, the sort we need to tackle long-term, large-scale problems. So the overall takeaway is that we don't have to get the government to take action with regard to climate change because we are the solution we've been looking for all along. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that a wonderfully optimistic way to look at the apocalypse? Except the problem is that it's not true and it's also unreasonable because when just 100 corporations emit 70% of global greenhouse gas emissions, the problem is that the markets are too free and we need the government to rein them in and compel them to stop ruining the planet also that way they can boost short-term profits. That's what we need because regardless of how many individuals take action, if large multinational corporations are not going to stop producing greenhouse gas emissions and ruining the planet, then it doesn't matter what we do at the individual level. This is a global crisis that requires the action of governments. And what Mike Lee doesn't want you to know is that he was paid to tell you that more regulation is bad because the industries and companies that think more regulation is bad helped him get elected. He literally took hundreds of thousands of dollars from oil and gas companies and now he's trying to sit here and tell us with a straight face that government doesn't have to get involved. Is that you saying that, Mike? Or is that your corporate donors who are the puppeteers controlling you? that are saying that. And he is essentially part of this new wave of denialism when it comes to climate change, because even if he doesn't outright think that climate change is a hoax like Donald Trump, well, nonetheless, he's still a climate change denier because he denies anthropogenic climate change. He denies the reality of man-made climate change. This is a quote from him during a 2016 debate with his Senate opponent. Quote, a big debate in our society about climate change. There can be no dispute that the climate is changing. Climates change. It's what they do. They always have. They always will. In other words, you know, the climate, it's always going to be changing. And there's nothing that mankind can do to stop the climate from changing. So it looks like we should just continue to allow these large multinational corporations to destroy the planet for their short-term profits. But don't forget to contribute to my campaign, oil and gas companies. Wink, wink. I mean, that's essentially what's happening here. And nobody's contending that a changing climate is abnormal. But what we are saying is that a climate that is changing this fast is not natural. It's due to human activity. And if we don't take action, the results will be catastrophic, and we have 12 years to take action. But he's not even proposing a solution because he's not even someone who believes in climate change. And essentially, if you don't accept that climate change is man-made, that it's anthropogenic, you are functionally the same as a climate change denier because your overall goal is to stop us from taking action. So as he sits here and tries to take down the Green New Deal in a humorous way while not proposing his own climate change legislation. This is par for the course. The people who don't like the Green New Deal, notice how 
They're not proposing their own alternative that's as ambitious as the Green New Deal. And even Obama came out recently and said, look, I think that people need to realize that the Green New Deal is going to be really, really expensive. It's almost like they don't want you to believe that investing in green, clean, renewable technology won't have a long-term economic payoff. Because Bernie Sanders and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez rightfully point out that climate change actually presents us with an economic opportunity to be a world leader when it comes to renewable technology like wind, solar, and hydro. But when you are bankrolled by oil and gas, then why would you want to invest in different technology when you're already doing just fine with the status quo? And understand that the climate doesn't care how expensive climate change mitigation will be. It doesn't care if it increases the deficit. Try explaining to Mother Nature that I'm sorry we can't stop destroying you because it's just not politically feasible currently and it's really going to be too expensive to change course. The climate doesn't give a fuck about that. The climate is changing whether you like it or not and we've got 12 years to act in order to stop catastrophic levels of climate change. And even if we take bold action, that still may not change very much. We still may very well be faced with catastrophic levels of climate change. So we don't just need to invest in climate change mitigation, but adaptation so we can learn how to live with climate change and the reality of climate change and all of the unforeseen consequences that it will ultimately produce. But people don't want to think big. And during the New Deal era, there were other people back then shitting on the New Deal saying this is so impractical. Well, if you needed a new heart, would you just shrug and say, well, you know, it's too expensive, so fuck it? No, because it is in your human instincts. It's embedded in your DNA to want to survive, to fight for survival. But because climate change is one of those issues that it doesn't pose a visual threat, it's something that's a lot more insidious. It's not like an asteroid is headed toward us and you could get a telescope and see it and see the threat. Since it's a lot more difficult to measure and it's since it's less tangible, people don't take it as seriously. But like it or not, it's coming. And it's already here, in fact. To say that it's coming is actually misleading because look at the frequency of hurricanes. It's like a yearly phenomenon. Now look at extreme weather patterns. So, I mean, I don't know what else to say. These people are not going to change, so we just have to vote them out of office and get people in office who believe in science, who actually care about the survival of our species and the habitability of our planet. What a dipshit Mike Lee is. I mean, I don't like to resort to ad hominem attacks and insult his intelligence, but... Um, in fact, I don't really even need to insult his intelligence because I really don't think he is dumb. I think he's playing dumb so he can basically maintain the status quo. And it's just, it's sad. What a shill he is. This is what shilling looks like.